All right, let's just start. All right, hey, I got Sierra Smith back on. She's going to be one of my weekly guests. And today she wanted to talk about a few things. And I think we're going to talk about how we're both using AI right now. So welcome back, Sierra. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, so why don't you start? Because I think you are probably uh, doing a lot more stuff with AI. And this is a little bit more down your path, you know, your digital marketing and everything. So why don't you kind of talk about the things that you're doing with AI right now? Yeah, so I'm learning about it, first of all, which I'm trying to stay ahead of the curve um, when it comes to AI and not get left in the dust. I was a little bit I mean, as a graphic artist, like having done a lot of graphic art, I was kind of like annoyed with AI at first with, because it was like really being promoted as like the digital art, like replacement. And, but I, you know, I'm trying to be channel my entrepreneur side and say like, that's fine. I better just capitalize on it instead of like getting left in the dust, but, um, and making it like an ethical issue for myself. (laughs) So I tried to, um, learn about, the like mid journey was the first one just using the images. Um, but I haven't actually used that in, in any like, uh, business pursuits. So the stuff that I am using, however, are, uh, chat GPT for writing blog posts for my website. And it's not anything that is really salesy or anything like that. It's like resources. So instead of like linking to, um, something that explains, like a certain concept on my website, instead of linking to someone else's website to kind of get more information, I'm just linking to my own that way. So I created like a blog section and had it write out uh, blog posts for different categories. That way I could really flesh out my website a little bit more and and have more backlinks to, um, I don't know if this makes any sense, but have more backlinks that drives, like ranks you higher in Google search and stuff like that. So I've been using that a lot on my website, but do you use chat GPT for anything? I use ChatGPT in the beginning, but I don't always have my laptop available or on. So for me, um, it's easier to try to find something that I can do on my phone or my iPad. So I like using Google's version, the Bard AI. And I think, you know, it's, it's very similar, but I like to use that just to kind of help me like organize my thoughts, you know? So if I have something I want to talk about or post or, um, you know, put on my social media pages, I kind of, you know, run it through the AI first to kind of give me other options or maybe help maybe try to attract more followers, you know, so that the topic is still there, but just trying to make it a little more interesting. So that, that seems to be helping and it, you know, it definitely, um, helps the creative side. Cause I'm not the most creative person, I think. So for me, it really helps me from that sense. And you you brought up something um, kind of interesting where you talk about in the beginning, you know, you're kind of annoyed with all the AI talk and and whatnot. And I think I hear that quite a bit where there's a lot of uh, people talking how AI is going to take a lot of jobs or, you know, certain jobs are going to be obsolete in a few years. And so what's your kind of vision on that or take on that? Yeah, so my hope is that it it takes over the the mundane, I guess. Um, the thing is that I think that what it's going to do is going to uh, it's going to take over in such a way that what the human interaction and like the really human part of life is going to come back. And so I feel like we have in the last decade had this shift to where we almost have to become like robotic and in what we're putting out and how we connect with people. And it's hopefully going to shift back to where like what we do can be um, really important is for the human experience, right? So like our actual human connection and interaction is going to be really important because we have all of this other technology doing those robotic tasks. And, And even like what we put out, um, I think it like I think about the robotic voice that like does voiceovers on a lot of videos, you know, and that they get a lot of traction. And then it's at, like at some point we're going to be so burnt out with that that we just want to hear somebody legitimately talk to a camera. Whereas, you know, the, over the past few years, like it's boring sitting and, li- and listening to someone talk in front of a camera. So I think that it's exciting to think that the human interactions are going to be more important again. And I hope that um, that 
AI, the stuff that AI is taking over is kind of the mundane um, parts that, that aren't enjoyable for life, I guess. Um, I know a lot of people who do the editing side, like if they could spend, you know, eight less hours editing, it would, it would be a really boost their creativity. So I think that it will help hopefully in the long run on some of that stuff. I know for, for me on, on uh, chat GPT has kind of gone downhill, I would say lately on its creativity. Um, like whenever I get put in a prompt, um, I haven't necessarily liked its output, but it does kind of give me a, at least a different spin or, or idea than what I might've initially had. Uh, but that's the thing is that you have to have real clarity when it comes to putting in your prompt or you're probably not going to get anything that's that helpful as a response. And I don't think a lot of people know how to be that clear with what they're wanting. Um, now, on things like coding on my website, like if I wanted to, I added the coding, you know, to have like a newsletter subscription or to um, have little pop up boxes. I actually put my code from my website into chat GPT. And I was like, change this code so that the boxes are blue and it spit out the code and I copied and pasted it into the back end of my website. So stuff like that was awesome. And now I don't have to like hire someone who knows how to code (laughs) to do those things for me. So that part was really cool. Like I could have the creative idea, but the technical side of it, like it was able to do it um, in seconds. So that was kind of awesome. That is way beyond what I mean using AI for, but that's great to know that that's how you know Chat GPT can be beneficial. And I, don't, and I don't know if I'm saying it correctly, but I think I heard someone say like AI is not you know gonna take away all these jobs that people are talking about, but it's kind of like if you're not using AI, then you know you're gonna be left behind in a sense. So it's like there's still going to be all these jobs that you're talking about that you know people need a personal touch, but the AI mm-hmm. is just going to just make it more efficient or, you know, save your time. Um, and just blending the two, I think is super um, bright for the future. So what kind of, I guess, besides chat GPT, um, is there any other resources that you're using right now? Yeah, so I've looked into some tools for YouTube. Um, so there's Opus, O-P-U-S, and Video AI, which is V-I-D-Y-O dot AI. And these are tools that where you can copy and paste the link to a longer form like YouTube video like this, and it will create all of your shorts content. And um, so you put the link in there and it, it will cut out... Um, cut out clips and add the text and captions and then spit them out to you in your email. And then you can pick and choose um, from the ones that you like. And then you'll have all those pieces of content to uh, to share on Instagram Reels or YouTube Shorts. And that those have been pretty cool. You, um, you can kind of customize your templates and stuff like that. And it keeps you from having to do um, all the editing part, like pulling the clips yourself. Yeah. Well, what was the second one you said? Vid? Vid? I think that's the one I use also. That's why. Uh, video V I D Y O. Yeah, I think that's the one that I use. Yeah, it's super. It's super helpful. I mean, I was kind of hesitant at first. Somebody else uh, sent it to me. They said, "Hey, you should try this," and then I looked into it, and yeah, it saves a lot of time. I mean, sometimes I don't know for you, but for me, I, I still got to move certain things around because it doesn't come exactly perfect as far as the borders and the edges. So I still got to move a little bit of things around. But yeah, it definitely saves a lot of time instead of having to go back and cut things out and and that that was just taking a lot of time for me (laughs) yeah to pull out clips and and cut out and add captions like that can take that's going to be very time consuming especially when you're trying to put out you know uh, at least one clip a day you know I mean that's for most people that's usually the goal so it can definitely be time consuming if you're trying to put out um consistent content to pull the clips yourself so I I really like both of those um for for automating the process. I think that's a really good AI tool and definitely worth the investment if you, you know, because I think you can pay a little bit to export it in um, higher quality and uh, like the 1080p. And so, or if you have a lot of hours of content, I guess, to, to pull, but I think that those are really helpful. Yeah. I like, you can set it up. Like you said, you can have all your, um, uh, kind of preset settings like your you know your title and your format like you can change the the borders and everything so yeah it saves you a lot of time I mean before I was in the beginning I was trying to edit a lot of stuff on my own and I was like 
man, this takes forever, but yeah, that saves a lot of time. What other things do you use to edit your videos? Um, well, I use DaVinci Resolve and I use CapCut depending on what I'm doing. For longer form stuff, I'm going to use DaVinci Resolve because I can make all of the cuts through the conversation and add in sound effects and all of that stuff really easily. Uh, and it's I, I learned video editing on Adobe Premiere and I can DaVinci Resolve is pretty similar. So it, that was kind of a, the easiest transition for me. CapCut is definitely more user friendly, probably for for someone who hasn't had video editing shortcuts already ingrained into their brain because <laughs> um, sometimes you just hit the wrong buttons but uh CapCut's great for the captions that's yeah. usually what I use it for yeah I like CapCut uh, I saw the DaVinci one I looked into it but I use LumaFusion but because that's is kind of designed for the iPad I believe so I, I use mm -hmm. LumaFusion um I use what is the other one I use power director I like Power Director. I've heard of that that's, one. Uh, yeah, Millennial Mike told me about that one. I think that's what he uses for all his editing and long form content. But yeah, CapCut. He, he's got a lot going on in his videos too. So that I mean, yeah, he's edited. So yeah. I think that, that must work really well. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's been fun though. Like, but like you're saying, I think you know you just got to get started and. For me, in the beginning, it was like a lot of times like you press one wrong button. It's like, oh, man, I got to start all over now because I don't know how to correct what I just did or I have to figure it out. So now it's a lot better because if I make a mistake, it's a little bit easier for me to, to troubleshoot it and figure out how to just continue from there. But in the beginning, it was like, oh, man, I pressed one wrong button and now I'm like, okay, got to delete it start all over again. So, yeah, yeah I definitely this, see why people outsource there video editing it is it's a lot to learn and very time consuming yeah I have fun though I'm sure you enjoy doing it though I have a lot of fun doing it though oh yeah um and I've gotten into recently getting like the for the the trendy like meme style stuff where you know it's the character like on a green screen like figuring out how to add those into to videos because they always perform so much better if you have like that something random going on in your video so I've been been learning more about the green screen effects like that yeah there's just so much different templates and everything I mean like you're saying the green screen the memes I mean, you just got to figure out what works best for you. But definitely, like you said, like, you know, the meme one, the green screen, those get a lot more uh, viewership and, and followings. But uh, hopefully, I mean, yours are great. I mean, my hopefully mine get better and get more viewers on them. But, but I've been having a lot of fun doing it. So if anyone wants to get tips and tricks on how to do this, I would reach out to Sierra and kind of pick her brain and see what she's doing and how she can help you. But this has been super fun. I love talking to you. I mean, you give me a different perspective on a lot of things. But we're going to come back after this on a topic that Sierra uh, has been trying to, is going to probably have a different view than me. And she's been wanting to talk about it for a while. So we, we'll be right back. Let's do it. <laughs> 